Age of Sigmar Warcry, Gloom Spike Gits versus Corvus Cabal. Hello folks, and welcome to another good old Warcry Battle Report. Today we are descending into a cave where mushrooms and minecarts are the theme of our amusement park, and for some reason the Corvus Cabal have invited themselves to ride as well. I will be using some custom built terrain today, and if you are interested in how I created these, feel free to check out the video, a link should be popping up now in the corner. Anywho, without further ado, let's introduce the armies and then flip some cards to see what is in store for this combat. For the Gloom Spite Gits in the hammer, we have two happy little squigs. In the shield squad, we have another two squigs and the Moon Clan boss leader. And in the dagger, we have, you guessed it, another two squigs. If you haven't figured this out yet, this is going to be quite the casual game. On over to the Corvus Cabal and the Hammer Squad, we have three half-naked Cabalists. In the shield, we have the Shadow Piercer Leader, her trusty Shrike Talon, and a pair of Cabalists with spears. And finally, in the dagger, we have a pair of Spire Stalkers. Now on to the cards. For the terrain, I decided to go with my own fun board today, as I mentioned earlier. Here it is all set up on the table. On over to the deployment card, and for this battle, we get Stranglehold. The Gloom Spite Gits will be the red deployment zones, while the Corvus Cabal will be the blue. And it looks as if each dagger squad will be showing up in round number two. For the victory, we get Assassinate. The attacker in this battle will be the Corvus Cabal, and they will attempt to get past all of those squigs to take down the Gits leader. They have four battle rounds to complete this task, or they lose the game. And finally, for the twist card, we have Sinister Bargain. For this battle, the Corvus Cabal are lucky and will get to add this blue-winged Raptorix to their warband, and this creature will be on the board turn one. With all of that out of the way, let us get those fighters on the battlefield and then roll some turn one initiative. For the Gloom Spite Gits, they end up rolling a triple and a handful of singles. For the Corvus Cabal, they take their 66 and roll up a triple, a double, and a single. The Gits have the initiative and will hold on to their wild die this round, and the bird folk have decided to do the exact same. So the round begins with the blue squig who will move up just a few inches and begin the protection blockade for its leader. After this move, the Raptorix will go ahead and head up after the squigs that are on the opposite side of the board, clogging up their forces. This will then end the turn for the actual bird, and the gray squig will now go and continue creating the blockade. Both of these squigs don't want to leave too much room for the enemy to sneak in, and this will end their turn. The Shrike Talon will go next and use all of its speedy movement to get around the small squig barricade, pushing himself up right next to the Gloom Spite leader that they must destroy. After this move, we turn things over to the Moon Clan boss, who will use the triple for the Stab Him Good ability and get the bonus to himself and his allies' attacks. Two attacks will swing into the Shrike Talon now. We have ten total dice, hitting in on fours, and the boss takes the Birdman down to half health. We will then turn things over to the Cabalist with the Spear, who will simply double move up and get right next to one of the squigs blocking his leader. After this basic movement, the Red Squig will leave his green pal to tackle the Raptorix and start moving over to the action on the other side of the board and end things there after the move. Another Cabalist will take its turn moving up behind its brethren, and with a double move, he will end its short turn. The final activation for the Gloom Spite Gits goes to the Green Squig who will take the bait and attack twice into the Raptorix. The green blob is hitting on threes with eight dice, and after that roll, the bird is eliminated. Well, it turns out squigs can hit pretty hard. For the rest of the turn, folks, since there is no more Gloom Spike Gits moves, all of these Corvus Cabal fighters will double move to position themselves closer to the Gloom Spite fighter they have to destroy. So after all of these fighters fly around the table with super speed, we will end battle round one. The Corvus Cabal are closing in on the Gits in their home turf. Can the Squigs protect their leader, or will the bird folk swoop down and pluck out the enemy leader? Let's move on to some turn two initiative. 
We will start off with the Gloom Spike Gits once again, and they roll up a double and a bunch of singles. For the Corvus Cabal, they end up getting a pair of doubles and a couple singles. The Gits have the initiative, and they will only use one of their two wild dice to make a triple and hold the initiative, while the Bird Folk will boost a double to a triple and make another double. Also, let's not forget some reinforcements are coming in this round to cause more havoc. So, let's start off turn 2 with the Moon Clan boss who will immediately use the triple for the stab him good ability and then attack into the Shrike Talon. Hitting on 4s, the first attack deals in 10 damage to take out the fighter. With still another action, the leader will start running away from the mess that is emerged in front of him and end his turn there, 4 inches away from the board's edge. The Corvus Cabal leader, the Shadow Piercer, will do something very similar to the Moon Clan boss and use the triple ability Grizzly Trophy. Nearby allies will now get an extra attack at close range. The leader will then move up to the side of the blue squig and attack in. Hitting on fours with five dice, the squig only takes four damage. The gray squig will go next and attack into the Cabalist right in front of it. He does get the bonus from the nearby Moon Clan boss here. Hitting on threes, the first attack absolutely decimates the fighter, and the squig will then move back a little bit to further protect his leader and will end his turn there. The other Cabalist with a spear will go next and is just within range of the damaged blue squig. Two attacks will go into the squig one after another. Hitting on fives, but the extra eight damage is not enough to take down the monster, and her turn will end. The blue squig is on its last leg, and it will go striking into the leader. The beast is hitting on threes with a boost to its dice. And the squig bites into the shadow piercer, dealing a big 16 damage, but that is not enough to take down the enemy leader. Following this, a cabalist will move up and then attack into the blue squig, hoping to take him out. The fighter hits on fives here, and with an unfortunate roll, the cabalist gets the squig down to only one health. An unfortunate turn for the Corvus Cabal. The red squig here will go next and will have a very simple turn just moving over and repositioning itself near the one thing it must protect and end its turn there. Another cabalist will go and just has to do one damage into this blue squig. The fighter will move up and attack the beast. Hitting on fives and this is just pathetic for the Corvus Cabal. Oh boy, hopefully they can hit the Moon Clan boss once they get near. For the rest of the round, we will have a bunch of double moves where fighters will get closer to the main action. I figured this would speed things up. You know, you all are busy people and probably have some things to get to, like your scheduled 2 o'clock book burning. Anyways, after all of these moves, we end round number 2. Despite the swarm of birds closing in on the Gloom Spite leader, the squigs are holding on and doing a good job holding back the invaders. Can the barricade hold? We shall find out in battle round three. We begin initiative with the Gloom Spite Gits, and they end up rolling a double and a bunch of singles. For the Corvus Cabal, they end up getting a pair of doubles and a couple singles. The Gits have the initiative and decide to boost things up to a triple, and the Corvus Cabal will add a triple as well. We will start the round off with the Blue Squig who wants to take out the enemy leader. The Squig hits on threes here, and the first attack deals enough damage to take out the Shadow Piercer. And since the blue guy still has another attack, well, he might as well just attempt to take out the Cabalus to his right. Once again, he hits on threes, and these Gloom Spite are rolling hot today, taking down another fighter. With that turnover, Corvus Cabal has some decisions, and the Cabalist in combat range of the Gray Squig will attack, but will first use the Onslaught ability. The fighter hits on fives against the Gray Monster, and after two sets of attacks, the Gitz fighter takes a solid eight damage. After this, we'll move things over to the yellow squig, we'll move up and engage the Cabalist with the spear. Once again, we have a 3 to hit, and the Cabalist will end up taking 4 points of damage, but he manages to survive and fight another day. This will turn things over to the Cabalist in front of the blue squig, and he is just praying to some chaotic god that he lands a single point of damage. He hits on 5s, and after what feels like 6 tries, the squig is finally taken down. The Cobalist will then move up onto the train tracks and hopefully next turn get around the back end to the Gloomspite leader. 
After this, we move things over to the Green Squig, who will pop off the Rush ability and sprint on over to the two Spire Stalkers and use its second action to attack the Gentleman. The Squig hits on threes here and rolls Amazing once again, slamming in 12 damage, almost taking out the fighter. The damaged Spire Stalker will fight right back into the Squig and clear out some room for his ally. The Stalker hits on fours. The first attack deals in four damage, but the second only two. Not the best rolling there, and things will turn back on over to the squigs. The red guy here will move up to the Cabalist on the minecart tracks and attack the enemy. Hitting on threes, and gets the fighter to half health, but the squig's turn will end there. We'll move on over to another Spire Stalker who will also try to take down the squig, and to add on to it, she will also use the Onslaught ability to give her a little boost. She hits on fours here. One blade slams in for 6 damage, and her second blade finishes the job, taking out the green squig. The gray squig will go next and attack into the Cabalist right in front of him. Hitting on threes, the first attack deals in 6 damage, and the second is more than enough to take out the fighter. The forces of the Corvus Cabal are getting thin, and we move on to their last activation. The Cabalist with the spear in front of the yellow squig. She has little to no choice here, and will decide to attack twice into the monster. Hitting on fives, she manages only four damage, and that is just not going to cut it. That will turn things over to the final two moves for the Gloomspite Gits. The Moon Clan boss leader will just move around the board and avoid all of these combats, while the purple squig here will just move up and defend its leader. With all of those moves complete, we will end Battle Round 3. After looking over the table and realizing the Corvus Cabal have only four fighters left that are either stuck in combat or too far from the Gloomspite leader, they have no way to close in and defeat the leader by the end of next round. They will throw in the towel and victory will go to the Gloomspite Gits. At the start of it all, I thought the 9 fighters on 7 was going to overpower the squig herd, but it turns out a bunch of little monsters came to fight today, and they fought hard. Even though it was a bit of a one-sided affair, the game was still a blast for me, and I hope you all enjoyed it too. If this is content you enjoy, please let me know by checking out the Patreon, subscribing, commenting, and checking out all of my other socials. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.